My name is Jim Alexander and I'm here with the next installment of my upgrades to my UMTEC AF202880 watt uh, laser. This upgrade is going to be the Y-axis stepper motor being upgraded from um, an open loop stepper motor, uh, in this case this is the actual motor that came out of the unit, to a closed loop. Okay. Uh, this motor here is a closed loop stepper motor that I was going to use. Uh, unfortunately, as you'll notice, the motor that came out of it is a dual shaft motor, whereas the stepper motor that I purchased was a single shaft. To get around this, I purchased a cloud ray reducer. This allows you to mount the stepper motor in here and with a belt drive, convert it to a dual shaft uh, drive. Uh, the problem with this is this unit ends up blocking the pass-through, so I had to go back to square one. Ah, on ALI Express I was able to source a dual shaft stepper motor and driver, and uh, that is what I ended up using. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at what I actually did. Okay, taking a look at the back of my machine. Uh, we have the tube on top and down below. <clears throat> Up underneath here, you'll notice that we have our dual shaft stepper motor here, and it is driving two rods on either side for the Y axis. So, what it, what did problems did I have with installing this? Okay, first off, this motor here is the motor that came out of it, and it is significantly smaller than the motor that I installed. So, because of that, one of the two rods had to be shortened by approximately an inch. Uh, luckily, these rods are not hardened steel. They are soft steel, so they cut very easily, and they can be um, cleaned up rather nicely. Uh, I had to use the existing, the coupler on one side is a stock coupler that came with the unit. This is an 8mm to 8mm coupler. And on the opposite side where I cut, this coupler is an 8mm to 12mm coupler. So, additionally on top of that, the frame up in here had to have part of the frame cut out so that the motor could fit in, and correspondingly on the top side as well. Alright, in the electronics bay, a couple of things that were, are different. I opted to install a 36 volt uh, power supply uh, to drive the two closed loop motors. The uh, existing 24 volt power supply is up here and it still powers the Ruida controller and the Z-axis drive. Uh, over on the side, over on the side over here, we have our stepper motors. The lower one is the Y axis, the upper one is the X axis. Now, coming off of both of these, at the top, you'll notice a black and yellow wire on both of them. These are the alarm wires. The stepper motor drivers will detect if there is an issue with the driver and or the motor and if they do it will set the alarm. These alarms are parallel together and feed down to the relay down below. The relay actually switches the uh, door protect switch and the door protect switch if, it, if the alarm sets off will activate and shutting off the laser front, uh, via the Ruida controller. Further to this, I took the stock driver from the Y-axis, which is a DM545, and the um, pre-existing cable that went up to inside the cabinet. Uh, there is a uh, DIN plug so that you could disconnect the Y axis and connect in your rotor or your rotary. 
What I did is my Y axis wires directly to the Y driver and that plug I kept and I drove it down to this driver here. This driver is actually paralleled with the Y axis driver. Now you might ask, if it is paralleled, does that mean they're both driving at the same time? No, it does not. On both of these drivers, there are two connectors, enabled positive and enabled negative. These controls are powered by this switch. The switch, when in the up position, enables the Y-axis closed loop driver. When it is in the down position, it now, con now enables the rotary driver. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic diagram for my AF2028. This is a uh, diagram I created, uh, which includes the low voltage and signal diagram. First off, the first red circle here is the Y-axis drive coming out of the reader controller. Around and over to the second red circle, which is the junction that splices this signal to the 2HSS57 and the DMC545 alpha. Okay, next, the blue circle indicates the switch that I installed to select between the Y-axis driver and the um, rotary driver. I'll explain this in better detail on the simplified block diagram. Finally, the yellow circle at the bottom is the relay that I installed to monitor the alarm signals from both of the 2HSS57 drivers. If either driver detects a fault or the motor hits an obstruction, this relay will energize disconnecting the door protect from the Ruida controller. Again, I'll explain it in further detail in the simplified diagram. All right, here we have the simplified wiring diagram for the rotary Y-axis driver enable. To begin with, either driver has an enable positive and enable negative. If there is 24 volts fed across these two signals, that driver will be disabled. So, over on the side with the blue circle, you see we have a switch that switches plus 24 volts to the enable positive of the rotary driver or the Y-axis driver. When in the up position, the 24 volts is, fed, is felt across the enable positive and enable negative of the rotary driver, thus disabling the rotary driver. In the down position, 24 volts is felt at the enable positive and enable negative of the y-axis driver, and the driver becomes disabled. Okay, finally, here's the simplified diagram for the door protect driver alarm. Uh, to begin with, the alarm plus and the alarm negative on each of the drivers provides 24 volts out if that driver detects a problem with itself or the stepper motor loses steps. This 24 volts is fed down to the coil of the relay, which energizes it. You'll notice the contacts 4 through 12 is completing the circuit for the door protect switch coming from the upper blue circle. Uh, this signal is a ground that feeds um, around through the door protect switch, through the uh, driver detects that one of the stepper motors has lost steps due to an obstruction or some other reason, then the corresponding driver will put 24 volts across the coil of the relay. This will disable the ground going to the Ruida controller and the Ruida controller will shut off the laser. Okay, so this is the uh, extent of my modifications for the X, Y, uh, and rotary drivers, as well as the enable select for the Y slash rotary. Um, these uh, modifications have vastly improved this machine. It is now capable of operating uh, to the performance of a thunder laser. I can engrave at up to a thousand millimeters per second quite accurately without the fear of losing steps in either the X-axis or the Y. 
The uh, rotary select switch allows me to operate either the rotary or the y-axis uh, just by a simple flip of the switch. Please feel free to leave any comments um, or questions uh, to the video, and I will get back to you as soon as I can.